a welcome to the, this fixed expectations recognition class. And we're going to be looking at one of the 10 fundamental patterns, which is called fixed expectations. And we're going to look at a little bit of theory around what that is. And then usually I like to take people through a little guided exercise so that they can, can start to recognize for themselves how does this pattern play out in my life? And by the way, if you ever think to yourself, oh, I don't have that pattern, then it's probably a little red flag to, to, to see that actually, you know, maybe um, there needs to be a bit of openness to, to see if, if that pattern is at play. I mean, it's quite possible that maybe you have completely uh, overcome this pattern, uh, but most people have all the patterns. Most of us do. So what are fixed expectations? And, and it's pretty obvious really, but to, you know, to look at it, uh, thinking things that have to or should go in a certain way or the way we want or expect and attaching to our idea of how things should be. So lots of shoulds. We had lots of shoulds last week. Um, I can't remember which one we did last time. Uh, I'll come to me in a moment, but uh, often patterns have lots of shoulds going with them. For example, <coughs> thinking someone should be a, a certain way, that they should behave a certain way, or that a situation should go a certain way, and in particular that it should go our way you know, the way that we want it to go, <laughs> the way we believe it's right. You know, this is right and that is wrong, um, which is, you know, obviously aligned to uh, polarized thinking. Uh, and, and these patterns, they all overlap. You know, one will, uh, you know, a bit like a, a, a uh, picture puzzle, you know, and they, and they, although it's actually more complicated than a picture puzzle, because rather than only four bits of a puzzle fitting in with each other, you know, or it's very holographic, but all, all the pieces can fit in with all the other pieces. So fixed expe expectations are, as they say, fixed expectations and preconceptions. It's like we, and often we haven't even thought or recognized oh I'm, I, I'm expecting it to be like that it's just like this is how it is or this is how it should be this is how somebody else should be this is how the situation should be um, and also this is how I should be you know I expect that I should be a certain way and false assumptions and it can play out, for example, as wanting to control, because if we're wanting a certain outcome, then sometimes we have to control our way to get that outcome. Uh, and that might be controlling other people. It could be controlling ourselves, could be controlling situations. And having set or fixed ways and should, should, things should be a certain way. Um, sorry. Um, yeah, I'm wanting things your way and my way and stipulations and that things should be a certain way. And there are, there are many, many shoulds. Um, in fixed expectations. So look out for shoulds. If ever you find yourself thinking things should be a certain way, then that's a good sign that it's a fixed expectation in play. And um, yeah, I've already said what, what everything else that's on the slide there. And so let's go through a little exercise. This is a guided exercise and it's best to do it with your eyes closed and you will have time to write some notes afterwards, but we, we're able to get much more in touch with you know, what's going on inside if we close our eyes. So I invite you to, to close your eyes and to take a few deep breaths from your abdomen.
just bringing your attention inwards. And we do this a lot in the Wang Gong practices. It's about bringing our senses inward. So this is just a little starter of that, really. <coughs> Closing your eyes, bringing your attention inwards. And taking a few deep breaths from your lower abdomen. And making sure that the shoulders are dropped. Often we can unconsciously hold our shoulders up towards our ears. And just breathing deeply from the abdomen rather than chest breathing. And come into your heart, try and be centered in your heart. And remember that patterns tend to play out in a very simple way to make it simple as either thoughts that we have and they're often very repetitive, although we may not realize until we really start observing them that they're repetitive. And they'll also play out as our emotional responses. And they'll also play out as how we behave in life, how we act and behave, which includes habits. So if we look at exploring this pattern and how it plays out in your own life, in your own mind. Do you ever feel that certain events should go a certain way in your life? And you could pick any situation from your life, either current, you know, something that's going on currently in your life, maybe a project that you're working on or just anything that's going on in your life. And in particular, maybe if you're working towards a goal or an outcome, or maybe for example, you're going, you know, you've got plans to go on holiday or people are coming to visit. Just pick something from your life and do you have an expectation of how you want it to go? Is there a particular outcome that you would like? And it's not to say that having outcomes and goals is not a good thing. It's just how attached we get to that outcome. And in particular, if we were to get upset, if that outcome didn't pan out. So if this particular situation that you're thinking of right now, if it wasn't going to go the way that you would like it to go, how would you feel? What sort of emotions would be triggered or generated if it didn't go the way you would like it to go? Would you be disappointed or upset or angry or sad? Or are you afraid that it might not turn out the way you would like it to go? Or would you be completely okay? Because these are the sort of responses that we need to be aware of to see if these patterns or the pattern of fixed expectations is in play. And if you think of this situation, or maybe you could think of even a particular person, do you have any stipulations on how this person should be behaving or acting. Do you expect them to be or behave a certain way? And if they don't behave that, that way, would you get emotionally disturbed? Would you get triggered? Would you feel hurt? Would you feel annoyed or would you feel absolutely okay, no matter how they behave 
or what they do. And remember, it's really important when we're looking at patterns uh, and, and we're observing ourselves and we're becoming very aware of or more aware of how we think and feel that we be very, A, we be honest. We can't uh, try and make it different than it is. I mean, we, we can often try to do that, but we need to, to not do that. And also, in order to do that, we have to be very, very compassionate and accepting of what is and how we are. Because often we can then beat ourselves up and be very judgmental for not being perfect or even for maybe not being so nice. So this is why we have to grow the five shin, the five essential qualities of the heart so that we can have more self-compassion. So observe your own response as well, because while well, your response to having this pattern, because that will also be a fixed expectation of how you should be. You know, I should be a certain way. I should be perfect or whatever the expectation is. And if you think back in your life to when you grew up, and you think of this, this pattern of fixed expectations of wanting things to be a certain way. Can you see where this pattern might have started? Where did it come from? Or who did it come from? Were there other people around you that you learned from or modeled yourself on without even knowing it? Because we just pick everything up from our surroundings unconsciously, automatically, like sponges when we grow up. So how were the people around you when you were growing up? Where did this pattern of fixed expectations start as far as you can see? Because it will have started even before you can see consciously. But purely from a conscious uh, perspective right now, where did this pattern of fixed expectations start? Wanting things to be a certain way. Just notice what information comes to you, remembering that you're in your heart, you're breathing from your abdomen, your shoulders are dropped, you're calm and relaxed, and you're self-compassionate. You're just exploring your consciousness to find out more about yourself. so that you can change and transform in a positive way. And if you think about this pattern of fixed expectations in relation to how you think the world should be right now, with everything that's going on, whatever is going on in the world right now as you listen to this live or later on recording, do you have any expectations of how things should be in the world. And that may include the world at large. It might include how certain bodies or institutions should be behaving themselves. For example, a government or any other company or institution. Do you have certain outlooks and expectations? And remember this pattern can align very closely with polarized thinking and other patterns too. 
but it can really align with the right wrong story. And if you do have a fixed expectation around whatever it is that you're thinking about right now, just notice how does that make you feel inside? What emotional responses are linked with this expectation or generated by this expectation? Are they good feeling emotions or more not so good feeling emotions? For example, frustration or anger or upset or sadness. Just notice. And if it's a not so good emotion, for example, frustration, it's a, it's a, a clear sign that, that that pattern is playing in, in the background. And remember these patterns, and you can go back and look at the other videos in the, in the free portal for this, these patterns constitute our false self, the self that keeps us imprisoned and prevents us from experiencing true freedom. So the true freedom is inside of us. It's our manifestation of our true self. And the patterns are the false self and they prevent true freedom. And then you might like to ask yourself, if, if I have these patterns of fixed expectations, and actually it's easier to just choose one particular person or situation rather than everything globally. So just again, pick one particular situation where you know you have a fixed expectation that is causing some negative emotions. And you might like to ask yourself, what must I have to believe in order to have this fixed expectation? What's the belief underneath it? Because there will always be beliefs associated with patterns. What must I have to believe about myself or other people or the world or how things should be for this pattern to be in play? Just see if anything pops into your mind. And if it doesn't, that's fine too. It would be a fixed expectation to expect to have all the answers. And then ask yourself, when I have this pattern of fixed expectations, and again, it's best to just really hone into one particular topic rather than look at everything at large, it's always easier to hone in down to one particular situation or person. When you think of this pattern of fixed expectations playing out in this particular situation, how do you behave? How do you behave in order to perpetuate or have this pattern perpetuate? It's like in order to keep the pattern in play, how do I behave to match that? What are my actions, behaviors, habits? For example, if you had a, um, a pattern of uh, a, approval seeking, a habit of approval seeking, then you would have to behave a certain way to approval seek, for example. And then you can ask yourself, given everything that you've just explored, becoming aware of what or how this pattern plays out in your life a little bit, how you feel when the pattern is in play, how you behave or act when the pattern is in play. You can ask yourself, do I wanna maintain that? Do I wanna keep going that way? Or do I want to change? 
would it feel better and more at ease and a relief to not have this pattern in play in my, inside me and in my life? And there's no right or wrong answer here. There's no should. It's just about you becoming aware of what you want and what feels right and what feels better. And your heart will tell you. It's your heart that will guide you in this. So just ask your heart, what does it want? without any expectations. And just acknowledge whatever answer comes without any judgment. Just be honest and compassionate. And thank your heart for giving you whatever information it is brought to you during this exercise. And when you're ready, just take two or three long deep breaths. And you can open your eyes and make a few notes if you feel like you would like to.